Since being is everything, how can I know this directly? You are a human being. The human is always seeking, wanting, needing, striving. That is its nature. But there's one thing about the being, it never arrives anywhere. It's a circle. Okay? And all it ever wants is the being. The being is the center. Okay? But we do not realize it's the being, we think it's the world that we want. I want power, I want security, I want safety, I want love, I want money. Okay? Yeah, but, but what it is you want is really the being that gives you all these things. Okay? And that's, that's the circle. So, <clears throat> so, since the being is everything, and we're going to realize that eventually, because that's when you are in your natural self, you see this as clearly as anything. It's obvious. You know, I wonder how I could have thought as I thought when I look back, you know, it's just amazing. But since being is everything, how can we know it directly? There's nothing to know. <clears throat> it's just it's just that you you um, it's just a that's just an ego concept. You can't know it. You, can, you, can you can't it, you know, know it, can't you? Around. Can you? Yeah. Yeah. And even if there's any experiencing of the being, it is the being that experiences all the time anyway. You see? That's beautiful to know. Now, that very understanding, you see, is the expansion of that awareness, is the, is the, the growth in your being. You see? Being. <clears throat> and then you will find... Yeah. So it's just a matter of relaxing. Relaxing. The, the usual activity, the mind activity, enough. Yes. Even if it's just for a short time. Even for a short time, to have that alert listening. How often we say, I got frustrated, I am confused, I don't understand. Alert listening. Listen, listen to it. You're trying to understand. But there's nothing to understand. You see? It's all a resistance. But relax. Listen. Just listen. Alert listening. I am. And there's nothing to understand. It's effortless. And the moment you begin to, to do that, you go into that I am. It, it starts becoming clear. There's nothing to understand. There's nothing to be confused about. Everything that you think and feel, look at it. And the moment you look at it, it takes courage. Don't get me wrong. I've worked with this with people for years sometimes, and, and they still get caught in their in their pain and their the, how they've been treated as a child and blah blah blah. And they've never known love, and and this remains strong. So I'm not saying this is simple and easy. What I'm saying is that as you are become alert and listen, you will see that all the pain that's coming up and all the isolation and deprivation or separation <coughs> that you have, which is the lack of love, okay? Because we don't feel love. It it's it's when you listen to it. Where is it? It's just a sensation in the body. But listen to that sensation. And when you listen to that sensation, what is the difference? For example, I, I was talking to Sylvia this morning and I said, you know, I was quite a sexual athlete when I was a teenager, but it's not because I wanted sex. It is because I wanted to feel affection. I wanted to feel the love. You know, and I, I, I wanted to be close to a woman and, and, and feel this. And sometimes there was a little bit of pain in, in love making, you know, touching and all doing all kind of things. So anyway, uh, but what is the difference between pleasure and emotional pain? And if you can feel it in your body, you will find a very subtle point. Mm -hmm. It's very, very subtle. The difference is so neutral. How many of us are driven sexually for pleasure? Because we want to join, we want to connect, we want love. You see, but we do it on the outside. But if we were to understand, you'll, you'll see something very interesting. There's nothing wrong with sex. Sex and spirituality are two sides of the same coin. But if you understand it, you'll find that sex is 100% imagination. 100% imagination. Really, don't take my word for it. Really get to know it. That's all it is. And that's why pornography is so popular on the internet. They're making billions of dollars every year. 
everybody wants it. Why? You see? Because we want to escape by feeling that momentary satisfaction. Uh, one time I, I, said, I said this to Sylvia too, and, um, and I, I learn a lot by doing what I do, hypnotherapy. Many men are very interested in, in women's busts, you know, beautiful busts, and, and they, get, they get turned on when, you, when they think of it or see it or whatever. And there was a time when I, I wondered, what is it? What is it that is so fascinating? Because I, I am not, you know. And uh, with a little bit of research, I, I, I came to a conclusion that, that the, the children that have not been breastfed develop a fascination for the breasts later on in life. And this is so interesting, you see. So, we, everything that is natural leads to naturalness. So we are a society that doesn't cater to naturalness. We have everything, even if instead of breastfeeding a child, for example, what do we do? We give it uh, <laughs> milk in a bottle, you see? And yet the child craves the natural. So, so this is how when we deviate from the natural, we, de we develop desires that are out of balance. Mm, that all of us have had lives in which yes we, we all that's that so is exactly it so here we are so here we are, we are. so not what we need of that either, really. I mean, yeah so we need to do is learn to listen very very alert right now when you listen okay when you listen total alertness what is happening you are in your natural self mm -hmm. big deal <laughs> that's it as a matter of fact you feel good you feel love right now it's natural but the moment you think about it no it's got to be more than that <laughs> oh it's got to be higher it's got to be something else you see and that is that it is that thinking that blocks us from the very state of purity of divinity you see and then this is that is the whole point um, let's go back to another question I get scared of losing my individuality. Do we really lose anything in our natural self? Feel it out, please. You, you can listen to it because right now, as we are in this context of listening, that's the beautiful thing about satsang, you see. It elevates your awareness. Some people have said, during satsang I feel very clear, then I go out and I forget everything. Of course you forget everything, you're meant to forget it. Because this is not information, this is, this is your inner state, this is your inner being. And as you awaken it each time in satsang, you don't have to remember it. It becomes you in your expression. It's your natural state. So, um, you just lose your self-consciousness. Hmm? You lose your self-consciousness. Self so why are we afraid of that? You see, this question was, I get scared of losing my individuality. Because your whole life is based on who you think you're not. Right? Very good. Your whole life is based on that. And we're even afraid of losing our misery, our suffering, the way we think things are. You see? So you actually don't really lose anything. You gain peace. You gain understanding. Whenever you are, actually are in, in, in a state of being, which happens to all of us from time to time at least, yeah. for snatches of time, you're right. it's not an issue. It, it, none of that is any kind of an issue when you're actually there. When you're actually there... It, it doesn't arise. No, it doesn't. It doesn't arise at all. Yeah. In that moment of love, in that moment of happiness, you just feel good. You see? And then you go back to your misery or worry, oh, I've got rent to pay, or oh, I'm going to lose my job, or I'm getting short of money, or, and then, boom, you go into your frenzy. And you retract and go back and contract again. You see? And, and then we think, oh, but this is real. This is real. The world is real. 
Okay, don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that anything is real or unreal. This is for us to find out, each one of us.